It was a trial that laid bare the brutality of Manchester's criminal underworld. Families at war who used guns and grenades in their disputes. Guns and grenades that would be used to murder two unarmed policewomen responding to a 999 call. It was a calculated trap by Dale Cregan, said the judge, with the sole purpose of murdering the officers in cold blood. Our North of England correspondent, Kieran Jenkins, has this. It's nine months since Dale Cregan ambled into Hyde Police Station. He appears unmoved by the terror he's just unleashed. Casually, he confesses to the murders minutes earlier of two female police officers, whose families have endured a long, tortuous trial, now finally at an end. Our lives have been shattered. I will never be the same again. To have a child taken away from you in such a cruel and meaningless way is without doubt the worst thing any parent could imagine. Cregan planned the murders meticulously. He was ruthless, indiscriminate, and on September 18th last year, PCs Fiona Bone and Nicola Hughes fell into his bloody trap. It began with a 999 call. I heard someone just threw a big concrete slab through my back window and ran off. What's the address there, please? 30 Abbey Gardens, Motion. Cregan had forced his way into the home of his hairdresser, from here reporting a fictitious crime. How long would it take to you know roughly? Because it's just happened, it's gone in on the priority, so that's within the hour, certainly. But okay. uh, they'll try and get up there as soon as, if there's a possibility, he's still knocking about. All right, then. Thanks very much. Okay. I'll, right. wait, uh, I'll be waiting. Cregan was waiting, and he was heavily armed. PCs Fiona Bone and Nicola Hughes had arrived to an ambush. Cregan fired at them every bullet he had, and as he ran off, he threw a grenade at the bodies. Grenade fragments sprayed the garden wall, and for two families, a horror story began to unfold. I think the minute he says, I'm from the police and I need to speak to you, I'm outside your house, that's when you, you start to realise there's something, something seriously wrong. The violence of that afternoon is something neither family can forget or forgive. He's taken my doors from me. I can't forgive him for that, and there's nothing I can do about it either. Uh, I was asked earlier in the day about capital punishment. Fine, as long as I don't have to do it. It was just the second ever grenade attack in mainland Britain. The first was also the work of Dale Cregan. By then, on the run for 40 days, after a summer in which Manchester's undercurrent of criminality exploded to the surface. Cregan's murderous streak began in May last year at this pub in Droylsden. Three men, including Cregan, pull up in a car before Cregan fires into the pub, killing Mark Short. In August, Cregan and two others came for his father, David Short, his first grenade attack. Then, for more than a month, he evaded capture before one final savage assault. As he handed himself in, Cregan said to the police officer, you were hounding my family, so I took it out on yous. That's all he's ever said about his motive. We, we don't feel much at all about Cregan. He seems to operate in a totally different and alien world to me. Um, maybe I've been lucky enough to live most of my life in crime-free areas, I can't quite understand how people live and survive in that environment. But there are communities here in Manchester in which the world Dale Cregan inhabits is all too familiar. It's a world in which some still see the police as an enemy and a legitimate target. We understand that in prison, Dale Cregan even seems to enjoy an elevated status among some inmates who celebrate the crimes he committed. One of the characteristics that typifies in the city areas is hostility and aggression, certainly amongst young men. Not everyone was surprised by the havoc Cregan wreaked. This man runs a gym on an estate he describes as lawless. He says tensions here are quick to flare. That's in the city. That's what goes on in the city. Feuds arise from absolutely nowhere. You looked at me funny, you spilt my drink. Your daughter's had a fight with my daughter, is, is, is an example, which can escalate, which can spill over. Uh, which will result in, in, in one or two, three, four, five murders. That's, that is an inner city area. Do you think it could happen again? Of course it will happen again, because 
once uh, uh, organisations like the police, if they are invisible, if they're not providing a, a service that is law and order, then, then people that live on this estate, you know, just like any other estate, will demand a level of law and order. If the police are not providing that service, then somebody will. The police are trying to adapt. Cregan's use of grenades last summer took them by surprise. It's since emerged they're in wide circulation. These weapons linked to Cregan seized in the last week. That was again obviously an incredibly worrying aspect of this case, the fact that it was military style weaponry, it was grenades from a former war zone. The problem is that clearly there are huge numbers of these weapons out there uh, from other parts of the world um, and it is relatively easy for certain people to import them into the country. Police are still hunting the criminals who armed Cregan and those who protected him on the run. Four men were today cleared of any involvement, but six of his immediate network were convicted of offences including murder and attempted murder. My family and I are still coming to terms with our loss, and not a day goes by without us thinking of Fiona. Our lives will never be the same again following the loss of Nicola, and today sees another part of this nightmare draw to a close. Dale Cregan will never be released, a sentence welcomed by the officers' families, whose anguish continues even as this trial finally concludes.